There you go, sir. Okay. Cool. All right, looking at exhibit 54 now, having gone through that exercise, can you identify for me, and we'll just go start with page 00789, identify for me by class number those courses that you recall taking that um, covered, in some respect, the restrictions imposed on you as a law enforcement agent under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution. So I believe it would have been a 09087. Hold on, I got to get my glasses for this. 09087, you said? Yes, sir. Okay, that would have been the one titled Modified Academy? Yes, sir. And that, um, you took that course in April 1999, is that right? Um, well, it says ending date, so I know it was sometime, it would have been sometime during that day. Okay. When, what is the next course? Uh, the basic academy. Uh, number? I'm sorry, uh, 00455. Okay, and again, that would have been sometime in October, November 2001 that you took that course? Yes, sir. Okay. When's the next one? Or I guess, what number is the next one? I'm not exactly sure, but I think we would have covered in, in 09199. The racial profiling? Yes. Uh, but that one you're not certain of? No. Okay. Is that because uh, <coughs> you don't necessarily recall being trained that racial profiling would implicate the Fourth Amendment and search and seizure? rules is that right I mean I think we I think that covers that but I'm you know I don't remember the specific training okay. but I mean I would assume it does okay well I don't want you to guess on okay stuff. so I'm not gonna guess sir yeah okay I just want you to things that you have a memory of maybe a vague recollection of that's fine but I definitely don't want you guessing okay yes sir and you understand the difference between a, a guess and an estimate right uh, yes sir okay I won't go through it then. What's, what's the next course number that you believe would have contained a component regarding how the Fourth <coughs> Amendment of the United <coughs> States Constitution <coughs> restricts your power and authorities as a law enforcement agent? Um, patrol school, that would be 02010. Okay. And that, you took that course sometime in September, October time frame 2002? Correct. Okay, when's the next one? Or what's the next course number? Criminal investigation, uh, 01160. So that's down towards the bottom of the page? Correct. Criminal investigation? Yes, sir. That would have been April, May 2007. Is that right? I want to say it would have been March or, or April. Actually, that was only a week, so that would have been in April. Okay. How can you tell it was only a week? Well, I remember that it was only uh, one week, sir, and it says right there it's 40 hours. Okay. And what, that's another question I had on this thing is uh, when it has under the hours column, it has a specific number of hours. I mean, obviously, that's the length of the course, right? Yes, sir. And when you take these courses, are they typically all-day courses? The, the longer ones, like the basic academy says 760 hours. Was that 760 consecutive hours all day, every day, until you were finished? Yes, sir. Okay, and it's the same with respect to these other ones, patrol school and criminal investigations? Yes, sir. Okay. So there's not any, any intervening gap from one day to the next for the coursework? Correct. Hey, turning over to page 00790, <coughs> if you can let me know which courses reflected there on that page you believe contained um, components that addressed in some way the restrictions based on, placed on your power and authority as a law enforcement agent under the Fourth Amendment. Um, 04570. Sexual assault investigations? Yes, sir. And again, that was sometime between September and November 2007? Yes. 40 hours? 
Yes. So that would have been a one week course. Yes. Which is, where's the next one? <clears throat> Protecting children online. It would have been 09719 and it's halfway down the. Okay, and that one was sometime between October and December 2008? Yes. 36 hours? Yes, sir. Okay. What does it mean here under the post column when there's a check, uh, check mark in the box there? What does that mean, if you know? I don't remember. Okay. Are there any others on that page that uh, would have contained a warrant or Fourth Amendment component? I don't think so, sir. Okay. And what about the next page? I that, that would be page 00791. I don't think so. Okay. Zero, zero, 00792? No, sir. Okay. And what about zero, zero, 00793? Anything there that would have contained a component um, wherein you would have learned about the restrictions, the limitations? placed on your powers and authority as a law enforcement agent under the United States Constitution. No, sir. Okay, and then turning to page number 00794, same question. Oh, no, sir. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Now, we've talked a little bit about the Fourth Amendment, the United States Constitution. I want to get some specifics, if we can. Do you recall learning specifically what the rules are in relation, under the Constitution in relation to your abilities as a law enforcement agent to seize a child from the custody of its parents? You remember what the specific rules are that govern your conduct? Um, I would say that there needs to be immediate uh, danger that the child uh, will suffer um, serious injury or harm uh, or death and that I may take a child uh, into protective custody without a warrant at that, uh, in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. um, if there is uh, consent from the parent. You mean or if there is consent? Or, or yes sir, yeah. or. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to make sure I was clear that you didn't mean to say that you need both an immediate danger and consent. No sir, it only would be or. Okay. Or with a warrant, sir. Okay. And were you finished with your answer again? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, well, that, that is my understanding of that, that with that, those are my restrictions, that I would need a warrant. Um, without a warrant, I would need exigent circumstances or consent. Okay. Can we do this, if you guys don't mind, because uh, I just need a big, big cup of coffee, and I need to go to the restaurant. Sure. Okay. okay, we are going off the record. The time is 10.52. We are going back on the record. The time is 11 o'clock. Okay. I'm going to show you what we will mark as exhibit number 98 to your deposition. Yes, sir. Sir, <laughs> sir and can I, um, can I just add in regards to the transcripts from my training? Sure. So, I mean, I think it's common sense, so I'm thinking to myself that I know it was a long time ago, but if, if I have anything to do with force or when it refers to, like, for example, the um, racial profiling, yes, mm -hmm. it would apply to, at some point, they would have mentioned the, the Fourth Amendment. Okay. What about the Fourteenth Amendment? Um, in regards, when it comes to use of force? Well, no, when it comes to any of your trainings that you've had, do you, do you recall having any 
training whatsoever specific to the proscriptions that arise under the 14th Amendment that restrict in some way your powers as a law enforcement agent? Yes, I'm sure I have trained on that. Okay. <clears throat> now, looking at really quick exhibit number 98. Do you recognize that document at all? Not specifically. Do you know whether or not that is a depiction of the training materials that would have been associated with the um, child abuse investigations training that we saw on exhibit number 53? I don't remember specifically this, um, I guess, this training material, but the, or the actual, um, what would you call this? PowerPoint. PowerPoint. But I do, like, the information would have been information they, they covered in the class. Okay. I don't think I have an extra copy, but everybody should have it from uh, Officer Lee's deposition. Hopefully I'll brought your stuff with you. But I'm going to show you in my exhibit book, the exhibit marked number 97. And you can take a moment to kind of flip through that if you like. <coughs> You guys will. I mean, you do have it actually because it's in the uh, no, no, disclosures. Here right, now, right, right. Yeah. Right. It's our practice to pre-mark everything and then just give it up on a DVD before we even start all this stuff. What exactly is that exhibit number 97? Um, so this is this would have been a PowerPoint for um, for a child abuse class. Was uh, that the PowerPoint presented to you in relation to the child abuse investigation class depicted on exhibit number 53? I don't remember specifically, sir. But I mean, some of the material would have been covered in that class. Okay. Well, let me ask you this: that class it was 40 40 hours long, correct? Yes. So that would have been an entire work week? Yes. Okay. And there were many different components to that class, correct? Yes. It's your recollection that one of those components addressed the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution and how it applies to restrict your powers and authority as a law enforcement agent in the context of child abuse investigations, correct? That I recall, yes, sir. Okay. Did you also have a component in that course, that 40-hour uh, course, that um, taught you about how the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution applies 
to restrict your powers and authority as a law enforcement agent in the context of child abuse investigations? Um, I, I would think it did. I mean, I don't remember specifically, but I would say it, it would. Okay. In either of those subparts of that 40-hour course, do you recall there being a PowerPoint presentation relative to that subject matter? That is the subject matter of how the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments to the United States Constitution apply to restrict your powers as a law enforcement agent? I don't remember a PowerPoint, sir. Okay. How did, describe for me how these courses went. Were they lecture? Were they, I mean, how did it go? How was it presented, this material in this 40-hour course? Um, well, they vary. I mean, I don't remember specifically, for example, this one. I know sometimes they, there's the presenter, they, they just stand up there and, and kind of ask questions and have the, the audience um, participate, or they, there's PowerPoints. Um, I think sometimes we do, or they have like where the students, they, they get into small groups and they interact and mm -hmm. run through a scenario. I'm not okay. specific. Are there always some kind of written materials associated with those subparts of courses though? I can't say always. I wouldn't say always, but, but, I'm but mostly. most of the time, yes. Okay. So when you say that you don't remember um, there being written materials or a PowerPoint presentation specifically related to the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment and how they might apply to restrict your authority and powers as a law enforcement agent in the context of a child abuse investigation, you're not saying that there aren't any such documents. You're just saying you don't remember one way or the other, right? Correct, sir. Before coming here today, did you undertake any effort at all yourself to locate training documents relative to how the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments might apply in some way to restrict your authorities, your powers as a law enforcement agent in the context of child abuse investigations? Did you yourself undertake any effort to locate responsive documents? Would that be documents that are mine, that I had in my possession from training, or I'm not sure? Well, you, you work at the agency, right? Yes, sir. There's somebody there that, for example, if you missed a training or you didn't remember exactly, you could have asked them, hey, can I see that, right? Yes. Okay. Did you do something like that here when you were looking for documents responsive to our requests? Did you do anything to locate responsive documents? I, if you mean, I'm, for example, I looked at my, I verified that I had um, one of the, the warrant manuals that I use. Did you bring that with you? Yes, it's in my car. Okay, let's take a break. Do you want to go get it? Sure. Okay. We are going off cold record. record. The, the, the fourth. time is 11.09. We are going back on the record. The time is 11.28. All right, we took a break so that you could go down to your car and retrieve documents that uh, you brought with you to your deposition but left in your car. The only document that you returned here with was a book titled Search Warrant Manual 2013 Edition. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, can I get a quick picture of this thing? Just zoom in on it. Thanks. Okay. Um, I have requested of counsel that we be provided a copy of this document. 
Um, she's represented that she wants us to serve her a formal request because it's her position that this document is not responsive in any way to the request for production that were served attendant to the deposition notice here. Have I stated that correctly so far? That's correct. Okay. You're not saying that you won't produce to us a copy of the manual. What you're saying is that you want us to serve you a formal request for the manual. Is that correct? I'm saying that you can serve a formal request and we will evaluate and respond appropriately. I'm not saying either way whether it will be produced. Okay. Let me do this. Let's go off the record just for a moment. We are going off the record. The time is 1130. We are going back on the record. The time is 11.34. Okay, I briefly looked through the index and the table of contents in the warrant search warrant manual that you brought with you here today. Is there a reason you brought that with you today? Um, well, I was trying to bring out stuff that I knew, like sometimes I, I would consult when it comes to warrants. Okay. When it comes to warrant issues, that's one of the documents, that book that you had here was one of the documents that you would normally consult? Um, yeah. I mean, that would be something I would look up if I'm not familiar with some, with like okay. an investigation or something that I'm doing that I need to write a warrant. Okay. You're aware through your training that hospital holds are seizures under the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment, correct? I guess I would say yes. Okay, and that's based on your training and experience with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department? Yes. Okay. And since hospital holds are seizures under the 4th and 14th Amendments, unless there is an emergency, is it your understanding, based on your training, nothing more, that they also um, fall under the warrant requirements imposed by the 4th and 14th Amendments? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. Can I have it rewritten, please? And since hospital holds are seizures under the 4th and 14th Amendments, unless there is an emergency, is it your understanding based on your training, nothing more, that they also fall under the warrant requirements imposed by the 4th and 14th Amendments? Yes. Okay. Have you ever gotten a hospital, or have you ever gotten a warrant to place a hospital hold on a child? I have not. You have not. If you were called upon to do that, where would you look to get the information that you needed in order to know what to do, what steps to take to get such a warrant? I would look at the at the policy um, in regards to getting a warrant for that. Yeah. To place a child in protective custody. Um, I mean, I follow pro I follow policy. When you say place a child into protective custody, what you're talking about there is actually seizing the child, right? What do you mean? Let me ask it this way. When you say taking the child into protective custody, what exactly does that entail? What do you mean? Well, it doesn't mean that necessarily, like for example, a hospital hold, I'm not removing that child from the hospital, but I am, I am um, placing them into protective custody, therefore uh, they, they're not allowed to be released to the parents. That child is not allowed to be released to the parents. Okay, and you understand that when you do that, you impose that requirement that the child cannot be released to the parents, you understand that that is a seizure of the child from the parents, correct? Yes. Okay, so when you say taking the child into protective custody, you mean you're interfering with the parents' rights to that child, right? Correct. And that's a seizure? Yes. Okay, so protective custody equals seizure, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I understand nobody likes to use the word seizure just because it sounds bad. Protective custody sounds better. But it's I just want to make it pretty clear today that when we talk about protective custody, what we're talking about 
is a seizure of a child from its parents. You yes. with me? Yes, sir, I do understand that. It's just okay. that it's a term that I, I use. Sure, sure, I get that. That's okay. So if you're in a situation where you're contemplating whether or not you should seize the child with or without a warrant, do you reference at all your warrant manual that you brought here with you today? Or is that a source you would reference? Calls for speculation and complete hypothetical. Just based on your own training experience and knowledge of what's in that manual. Same objections. I guess it would depend on the, the actual investigation I'm conducting mm -hmm. and whether or not I'm in, I am familiar with the type of, um, I guess, warrant I would write or, or, or just to consult with, with, yeah, with the book. So if it was a situation that you weren't familiar with, then you would consult that book to get, potentially get information to guide you? Misstates testimony calls for speculation. And if I'm misstating anything, please let me know, because I don't want to put anything, any words in your mouth at all. Well, for example, if I were investigating a case where I'm not familiar or have questions in regards to the procedures, um, I would either consult with that book or consult with uh, a partner or consult the department policy mm -hmm. and procedures. Okay. Are you familiar with how to go about getting a warrant to seize a child from the custody of its parents while the child's at the hospital? I've never done it. Are you familiar, though, was my question. Are you familiar with how that would be done? Um, I would... I'm going to get, say yes. I, I, I have never done it, but I'm going to say that I would just do, do it as I would do any other uh, search warrant. Okay. 